Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eat World, and today we're going to take a look at the beta for the brand new multiplayer tactical shooter, Rainbow Six Siege. I finally got a chance to check out this game on PC and the PS4 over the last few days, and I've got to say it's been a pretty interesting experience so far. Obviously, I've only had a few days to check out this game, so I'm not going to be able to cover every detail in this video, and I might forget a few things. Also, remember that this is only my opinion, and you might not totally agree with me, so feel free to let me know what you think in the comments section below. So what is Rainbow Six Siege? Well, it's a modern day theme competitive FPS game based on counter-terrorist operations. In a lot of ways, the core gunplay resembles games like Battlefield or Call of Duty, but the mechanics in general are a lot more realistic and aren't designed to be as smooth. I guess a good comparison would be Armour 3, which at times can look like these arcade shooters, but underneath is completely different. What I mean by this is that your soldier moves a lot slower, aims a lot slower, and most importantly, you don't regenerate health and you don't respawn. You could say Rainbow Six also has a lot in common with games like Counter-Strike and Insurgency, which both have a very similar competitive style. Compared to both of these games though, Rainbow Six has a much bigger focus on gadgets and using the environment to gain a tactical advantage. The maps in Siege are a lot smaller and most of the action tends to be focused inside a building around the objectives. On the surface, this kind of sounds a little too simplistic, but the whole idea of Siege is that almost everything is destructible and there's always new ways to assault an objective. Now, getting into Siege can be frustrating at first because there is a lot of mechanics to learn and it's hard to figure out when to use them all. Basically though, the way things work in the 5v5 multiplayer mode is one team defends the bombs and the other team is given the job of disarming them. Each match is a best of three rounds, which are over if a bomb is disarmed, the timer runs out, or all the players on one team are dead. Both teams alternate between attack and defense, and each round can take up to five minutes depending on the skill of the teams. Like I said, this mode seems very simplistic, and I'm not going to lie, it kind of is, but once you start to get better at the game, it becomes a lot more fun. If you just run through the front door, there's a good chance you're going to get shot, so you really have to think tactically if you want to succeed. Players can pick from a range of different operators, each with their own special gadgets, which help out the team in different ways. As well as these gadgets, players can rapple up the side of buildings and break through walls, so as simplistic as the objectives are, every match does feel slightly different. Now, here's where the problems with Siege start, because in theory your team should be able to combine these skills and work together to succeed. The problem is though, this only really works when your team is communicating, which is almost never the case if you're playing solo and getting matched up with random players. Rarely do you get matched up with a whole squad of players who communicate and work together, and this just leads to most of your team doing their own thing. What this means is that even if you do win, most of the time you don't feel like you've achieved anything, especially if you get killed and you spend three minutes waiting for the next round to start. Another thing that you realise pretty quickly is that sound cues are a really important part of staying alive in this game. The problem is, when your team is just running around with no leadership, you can't tell whether what you're hearing is the enemy or your own team. When you play with a bunch of your own friends, though, it does get really fun because you can stop your team and use sound to figure out where your enemy is hiding. You can also use sound to determine the location of the bomb or other gadgets, but like I said, unfortunately it's pretty rare to find a game where you can actually put this to good use. Now speaking of sound cues, as you can see in this gameplay I'm playing solo against AI in the terrorist hunt mode, and I'm moving very slowly. Last night I was playing with four other friends failing hard to complete these same maps, and to be honest I found it easier today doing it on my own. In Terrorist Hunt, the aim of the mission is to kill all of the terrorists in a building, and believe me, it's not as easy as something like a COD campaign. You really do have to stay alert and keep your eyes and ears open, which is why it's so much easier to do solo than it is to do with a team getting in your way. If you've got a copy of the beta and you haven't already tried this out, then I definitely recommend giving this a go, because then you'll know exactly what I mean. The first time I played one of these mission solo was kind of like that eureka moment when I finally figured out what the devs were trying to achieve. As a normal run and gun FPS game, this game gets really boring really fast, but when you use stealth and your gadgets effectively, then it is actually pretty fun. That being said though, I'm still not sure there's enough content here to keep me interested, so hopefully they add some more dynamic modes in there with the final release. 
But finally, the last point I should make about this game is that after playing it on PS4 and the PC, so far it really seems like PC is the way to go. The PS4 version for me crashed every few games, and the frame rate is a lot lower than the 60fps benchmark that we've come to expect these days. Normally I don't really worry about graphics, but the PC version on my rig runs comfortably on ultra settings, which is noticeably better than the PS4 version. It's not like the subtle differences in BF4 either, the lower frame rate really does affect the overall gaming experience, and the game seems to be a lot more stable on PC as well. Another big issue on PS4 for me was the fact that the controls feel a bit sluggish compared to other games like BF4, and it's hard to be as accurate as you need to be. On PC with a mouse and keyboard, Siege feels pretty much the same as any other FPS game though, and of course you have the freedom to customise your own layout. This sort of game really requires you to go for headshots, because enemy players can take a lot of damage if you shoot them in the body armour. For this reason, the accuracy of a mouse just seems to suit this game, and even though I prefer to use a controller, in this game, it's just not as good. But anyway, to finish up, if you haven't already had a chance to try the beta out, well it is pretty fun, but I won't go as far as to say it's a great game yet. We'll have to wait and see what other maps and game modes the devs add in, and hopefully they'll also improve the frame rate and the stability. I think if you're still debating whether or not to pre-order this game, I'd probably hold off and see what the final release is like first, because there is a lot of work to be done. Also, the networking in this game is a host-based system, which seems a little buggy, and unless they improve this, the game might not even take off. But bearing this in mind, do I think that Siege will take off? Well, it's hard to say because it just can't compete with all of the big name FPS games at the moment. CSGO already has that competitive side of the market wrapped up on PC, and there just isn't as much content in Siege as you'd find in games like BF4. The only thing this game really has in its favour is the fact that there aren't any other similar competitive tactical shooters on console. I'm pretty optimistic, but the game will still have to come out swinging if it wants to survive, so hopefully it is perfect at launch and it does gain that loyal player base. But anyway guys, that just about wraps up this review, so let me know what you think of the Rainbow Six Siege beta in the comment section below, and as always if you like what you see don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Also check out the links in the description below if you want to see more of my videos, or if you want to support my channel on Patreon, and until next time, see you later, and have a good one.